Welcome to Sky Scholar, the channel where you can learn about new concepts in physics and astronomy. I am your host, Dr. Robitaille. Today, I'm talking about one of the guiding principles in science, Occam's razor. William of Occam was a Franciscan monk who died in 1347. Occam's razor is also known as the law of parsimony. The principle advances that among two competing theories explaining a phenomenon, the one which is simplest should be selected. Occam's razor has been applied countless times throughout history. The classic example of the use of Occam's razor has always been the selection of the heliocentric theory of the solar system advanced by Copernicus over the geocentric model proposed by Ptolemy. The heliocentric model positioned the Sun at the center of the solar system. This resulted in planetary motions which could follow simple ellipses. Conversely, the Ptolemaic model placed the Earth at the center. The geocentric model thus required that the planets executed strange motions or epicycles, with the stars in a band around our solar system. Though both of these models explain the movement of the Sun and the planets in the sky, the heliocentric model was adopted because the movement required was much simpler. The crazy planetary movement of the geocentric model reminds me of Rube Goldberg, the famous American cartoonist. Occam wanted simplicity, both in action and explanation. However, Goldberg constructed the most complex machines to perform the simplest tasks. Here is an example of one of his contraptions, a self-operating napkin. Today, decades later, Rube Goldberg machine contests are still held where contestants make the most complex of contraptions possible to perform the simplest of actions. They are the total opposite of Occam's razor. Though Occam gets the credit for his razor, the idea, like many in science, can actually be credited to much earlier times, in this case to Aristotle, who lived more than 300 years before Christ. Aristotle advanced the following. We may assume the superiority, other things being equal, of the demonstration which derives from fewer postulates or hypotheses. Though Aristotle was first, I think Isaac Newton phrased the idea best in 1726. We are to admit no more causes of natural things than such as are both true and sufficient to explain their appearances. Importantly, Newton even went further when he stated, therefore, to the same natural effects, we must as far as possible assign the same cause. Burton Russell said something very similar when he declared, whenever possible, substitute constructions out of known entities for inferences of unknown entities. This principle reminds us that in building models of the sun and the stars, we must be guided by phenomena which are known on earth and in the laboratory. Departure from the principles advanced by Occam, as restated by Newton and Russell, is one of the major reasons why invalid ideas can continue to thrive, even in scientific realms. Sometimes, though, you don't need Occam's razor. Occam only addresses the situation where two competing ideas are supported by experimental evidence. This is important to recognize as the razor is not necessary when an idea cannot properly account for material facts. Many scientific ideas simply collapse on their own because they don't provide an, a valid explanation for the observation. Remember, Occam's razor can't be used blindly. Sometimes, rarely, the more complex explanation is in fact the correct one. Occam's razor is a powerful guide, but its guidance can be overruled by things such as laboratory experiments. As we continue to explore the sun, the stars, and other physical phenomena, let us keep our minds on the lesson of Occam's razor. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation on some of the guiding principles of science and will work with me as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. In addition, subscribe if you want a journey through space here with me at Sky Scholar. 
Discussion and comments are always welcome down below. I'll see you soon on our next video.